for the Bible, come and see. Jump into God's big story with Scout and me. We'll make discoveries. Now put your hands up, put your hands down. Put them on your head, touch them to the ground. Shuffle to the side, spin and make a sound. Now your wiggles are out and it's time to get around. One, two, three, come along with me. It's time to explore the Bible, come and see. Jump into God's big story with Scout and me. We'll make discoveries. Malachi, Matthew to Revelation. We belong to God. We are his creation. One, two, three, come along with me. It's time to explore the Bible. Come and see. Jump into God's big story with Scout and me. We'll make discoveries. Let's get our wiggles out. I'll put your hands up. Put your hands down. Put them on your head, touch them to the ground. Shuffle to the side, spin and make a sound. Now your wiggles are out and it's time to gather round. One, two, three, come along with me. It's time to explore the Bible, come and see. Jump into God's big story with Scout and me. We'll make discoveries. together. This verse teaches us about what God can do. God is able to do far more than we could ever ask for or imagine. He does everything by his power that is working in us. Ephesians 3:20. Hey, great job. Let's do it again. God is able to do far more than we could ever ask for or imagine. He does everything by his power that is working in us. Ephesians 3.20 Ooh, nice work, everybody. Hey, guys, good morning. How are you today? A um, little warm today, but we're going to make it through this day, right? Sun is shining, at least right now. <laughs> And uh, just want you to ha um, have a good time listening to our story today. And uh, we're going to be talking about shepherds and their sheep. And at first when I saw this, I thought it was about the story of the lost sheep, but it's not. It's a different, different thing to think about here. So I want you to really pay attention to this story today. Our paper, if you have it in front of you, you're looking for your hidden word. Um, they are hidden in the little rocky pathy here that's um, very sh dark, but it says the word, what do you think, shepherd, yes. And I know most of you know what a shepherd is if you've been in my class, and those that haven't, I'm sure maybe you might have heard this story of the 23rd Psalm, but um, a shepherd is someone who takes care of their sheep and that makes sure that the sheep are well fed and they're well taken care of and they're kept really safe. And did you know that God is our shepherd? Well, we're gonna hear about that in our story today. All right, so I want you to listen really good, okay? All right, let me get my cards and get ready to do our story. All right, here we go. All right, there was a little child who asked her parents, what God was like. Her parents smiled and they said, come with us outside. And when they went outside, they saw a shepherd. They must be living in where shepherds are and where their sheep and the little girl want to know what, what a shepherd was. And so what they saw was a little boy um, taking care of his sheep, okay? I'm going to use that card many times today. But in the Bible, there's a psalm, and it's the 23rd psalm, that teaches us about our relationship with God. It is similar to how a shepherd cares for a sheep. So let's watch and see if we can discover 
the nature of God and the character of God, okay? The shepherd was leading the sheep to the fields of green grass, and he led them to that, and also a quiet stream. There's a stream running through the valley there, and we're going to find out what both of those things are, okay? All right. Look, the shepherd is finding a good place where the sheep can eat and drink. He's making sure his sheep are well fed. The girl realized God is like a good shepherd. He takes care of our needs too and makes sure we are provided for. The shepherd, when watching him, began to lead the sheep onto a path across the field. And this is the path that he, they led them across the field. The girl's parents told her that God helps us lead us onto the right path, just like the shepherd. He cares about us and wants us traveling on the right road. We have to listen to God's voice and follow his direction. So I'm gonna lay that over here, okay? On the path ahead was a dark tunnel. The sheep were very, frightened, but the shepherd walked right by the sheep as they went through this scary path. Now, it was really dark on the sides, kind of fell off on the sides, and the sheep looked like they weren't safe. They kind of had that in their heads, they weren't safe, I guess. The parents encouraged the girl by reminding them, reminding her, that sometimes in life we have to go through difficult and hard situations. Now, if you stop and think about that, what are we going through? We're going through um, this COVID thing that is keeping us from all kinds of things, and we might be a little afraid of what's happening each day. Why is it taking so long? We've been in the house a long time. You know, we can't go to our favorite parks sometimes or um, amusement parks and things because it's just not safe. So it's sort of like that, okay? Um, we don't have to be afraid. Remember we've talked about that, how we don't have to be afraid that God is with us just like the shepherd when the shepherd walked with his sheep and made sure that he was on a good path. He had to sometimes pass through this, but the shepherd was going to take care of him, wasn't he? So we don't have to be afraid. God will be with us just like the shepherd walked the sheep through the dark, dark tunnel. Well, on the other side of this tunnel, there was another path. Okay, we're going to make believe this is a double path, okay? Well, there was another path that they had to go through. And it was, it was an unsafe path. And one of the sheep began to wander off course. Now you think, it doesn't show a lot of sheep here, but the shepherd has lots and lots and lots of sheep out in the field with him. So the shepherd had to use his rod and staff, okay? Now it shows the rod here kind of small, but I think it's a little bigger than that. But, um, and the, the staff, the hook thing here, um, re remember that the hook, um, some of you were in my class, and I and I showed them that um, the hook um, was to gather the, the sheep in, put it around his neck, and pull him in, like, come back here and behave and, and pay attention. And that's what we did. And when I did that, I was using a cane back then because I had just had knee surgery, and I, sh I used the end of my cane to show you how to do that. But some of you may not know that, but that's... Um, Kind of like if you've seen a cane, that's kind of what it, it looks like. So he, he took care of his sheep and pulled them back in, and that's really cool. So the, the sheep began to wander off course, and the shepherd used the rod and the staff to get them back on the path. The girl looked very confused. The rod and the staff didn't look like a comforting object. Remember I said it really was, though. A rod and staff provides guidance and correction to the sheep and to keep them safe. And a shepherd knows what is best for his flock. 
His sheep must learn how to follow and obey the shepherd's directions. Sometimes we need direct uh, correction too when we wander from God's path. We need to obey and follow God's direction because we trust God knows what's best for our lives. Now, I know we're young and we um, follow our parents' you know, directions and sometimes they tell us to do something or come here and we decide we're just going to go do what we want to do. So that's sort of like the, the sheep. And our parents are following God's direction and they're trying to help us and teach us to follow God and they will use that example too probably and say we need to follow God just like you need to follow me. You need to pay attention. You need to understand when I say come, you come. You know, so, um, or you do, and you have to do. It's sometimes not easy, is it? It's hard, and uh, we need to try to obey. Well, the shepherd, in this time, would take some oil, and they would pour it on the sheep. Now, this oil, um, remember, always comes in a jar or something, and he would have it with him, maybe in a, I don't know if they would use kind of a baggy thing of a jig to, um, I forget what that's called, <laughs> I meant to look that up, um, carry it with them and they would pour the oil on the sheep and onto their heads. Now, I kind of looked that up, it didn't say it in my story because I was like, you're probably saying, why are they pouring oil on their heads? And they would pour it on their heads to, um, especially like around their nose and stuff, because the flies would gather. I don't like flies. The minute I put food out here, the flies just come on right out here, bother me like crazy. Gage gets all upset. He don't like he don't like the flies on his food. So we try to put something out that keeps the flies away. I don't put oil, but that might work. I don't know. <laughs> but they put the oil on them because the flies would go up in their nose and they would send the flies up in there and then they would, you know, um, have babies and stuff and they would cause all kinds of bad things in there and their brains would all get confused and they wouldn't know which way to go and stuff. So the oil was a way to anoint the sheep and at that time, I don't know if any of you ever seen anybody be anointed in our church if they're sick or if they just want God's, you know, inner peace or whatever, just, and then the pastor will um, put oil on their foreheads and that. And it is an anointing to, um, reminds us of the many blessings that, sh the, um, that God will provide for his sheep. And we are his sheep. Did you know that? We are his sheep. Just like those sheep, God's the shepherd. We are the sheep. And God um, anoints and chooses um, us to be his children. He wants to pour out blessings in our lives. So they would pour that on them and they would, it was just like a symbol that they knew that God was in charge or the shepherd was in charge and was caring for them. He would care so that they don't have a problem. And God does that for us. He cares for us and he watches over us. And he doesn't want bad things to happen to us. And he wants us to feel his blessings all the time. So the little girl begins to realize how much the shepherd loved his sheep and how he was always watching out for the animals and the bugs and anything that would keep the sheep from being safe. And he would take care of them. And it's uh, God is our shepherd, like I just said, and his love is even greater, so much greater than the shepherd um, for his sheep. He cares about us immensely. He just watches over us all the time. And her parents explain how God wants to have a relationship with each of us. And when we choose to follow Jesus, and when we choose to follow Jesus, uh, we are promised that um, we will get to live with him forever, and he will never, ever, ever leave us. The girl replied, what do you think she replied? 
I want Jesus in, in my life. I want Jesus to be my shepherd. And that's what I've been trying to say each week, that you know we can talk to God anytime. We can ask him to come into our hearts, to live with us, to watch over us. And that's what this little girl thought of when her mom said that. She thought of Jesus, and she thought, I need Jesus in my heart so I can be a good girl, that I can uh, walk the right path, not get stuck in the bad areas, not get distracted, but I can always talk to God. And this is her accepting Jesus as her Savior. And we need to do that as, as our little boys and girls, we need to do that. And Jesus will be with us all the time. Pretty cool story of that little girl, huh? And the shepherd watching over us. I think that is a cool story. Um, God is our good shepherd. Remember that. And may you trust him as you follow wherever he leads. Okay? Keep him at the front of your life. Okay? And never, never leave. All right. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for being our good shepherd. Thank you for watching over us. Thank you for taking care of us daily, that we go through the dark times in our lives and we go through the good times. It doesn't matter, you're there, you're watching over us. You know each step we take and each path we follow and that you will be there for us. Thank you for all this week and we ask this in your precious name, amen. And I'm sorry if the dog next door was barking. <laughs> He's out there wants some company. <laughs> All right, you guys have a great, great day, and I love you. Hey, boys and girls, just a, a little bit more. Um, we have a little video of um, some sheep and uh, shepherd, and I thought you might enjoy watching that. That goes along with our story. So pay close attention, and again, have a great week. Hey friends, welcome back to another episode of the Totally Kids Show. Today, we're going to be hanging out and learning about some cute little guys that have been around for a long time. They've been around for so long, they were there when Jesus was born. Today, we're going to be learning about sheep. Jeff and Teresa, they own this ranch here. Thank you guys so much for having us. You're welcome, we're glad you're here. So tell us, what part of the ranch are we in right now? Well, we're actually in one of our corrals where we keep our lambs. We have a group of ewe lambs. We have a group of ram lambs. Sheep are amazing. There are over 1 billion sheep in the world and over 900 different species. Sheep are smart and can recognize their friends in a big herd and their shepherd. They come in all shapes, sizes, and colors. Adult males are called rams. Adult females are called ewes. Babies are called lambs. The breed here is Rambolet. Hey Gunner, what do you call the quietest farm animal? I don't know. A sheep. So, how long have sheep been around? Sheep have been around for thousands and thousands of years. I'm sure you've looked in the Bible and seen they were in Jesus' time. In fact, they are mentioned in the Bible 500 times. That's a lot. So, I see you have a dog here. How does your dog help you with the sheep? Well, our dog is a great help, because he's a border collie, and border collies are born with the innate ability to herd sheep. So what we did is we taught him a few different commands, and he now goes out and helps us bring sheep in, put them in pens. He is such a good help. He would rather work the sheep than eat or do anything else. Would you like to see him work? Oh yeah, that'd be awesome. All right, we'll go put him to work. Walk up. Good job. Okay, easy, easy, sit. Good boy. So right now he's getting five sheep that we are gonna weigh. guy in. All right. So he's in the scale. So this sheep weighs 151 pounds.
Hey, Beth, what do you call a sheep that dances? I don't know. A ballerina. That was a bad joke. She got me there. Uh... What we're going to do is we're going to take these wheelbarrows inside, scoop up some manure, put that on the pastures in the winter time so that in the spring we get rains and snow. We'll have fertilizer on the pasture and it will grow real tall for them to eat. So, what's the sheep's names? Well, only a few of the sheep have names if they're very special. Like we have one sheep that is named Panda. We have another one that's called Roly Poly, but the majority of them don't have any name at all. Now, we're going to bring the sheep out here because they like to come out in this pasture and eat the green grass. Sheep eat grass and other pasture plants. They spend about seven hours eating two to four pounds of food each day. So we have some sheep wool here, and I would love to teach you how to spin it into yarn. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. You're going to start pulling these fibers apart. Each one of these fibers is hollow like a straw. If you have a wool sweater on, it will keep you warm in the winter, and it will keep you cool, believe it or not, in the summer. You're going to start twisting. Twist, twist, twist. And if you gently pull, look at that. You've made yarn. Thank you guys so much for showing us your awesome range. It's been our pleasure. Hope you come back sometime. We always love to have people come. It was so fun. We'll see you next time. On the Totally Kids Show. Thank <laughs> you.